Our top story, Recep Tayyip Erdogan has a mandate to rule until 2028, having secured five more years as the leader of a country at the crossroads of Europe and Asia that plays a key role in NATO as well. Yes, now leaders from across the world have sent their congratulations, highlighting Turkey's enlarged role in global politics. His next term is certain to include more delicate maneuvering with fellow NATO members over the future of the alliance and the war in Ukraine. Here's how both Russia and the West are booing the Turkish president. U.S. President Joe Biden spoke after talking to Erdogan on the phone to congratulate him on winning the Turkish election. Biden said Erdogan raised the possibility of U.S. sales of F-16 aircraft to Turkey. The U.S. president brought up Turkey's uh, dropping its opposition to Sweden entering NATO. NATO partners are anxiously waiting for Ankara to approve Sweden's stalled bid to join the U.S.-led defense alliance. Erdogan has blocked the application, accusing Stockholm of sheltering Turkish opposition figures with alleged links to outlawed Turkish militants. Two, I spoke to Erdogan. Oh, yes. congratulated Erdogan. And uh, he, uh, he still wants to work on something on the F-15s. I told him we wanted to deal with Sweden until I get that done. And uh, so we'll be back in touch with one another. But I, it was basically a congratulatory call. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz also spoke to Erdogan, invited him to visit Berlin. As per an official release, Scholz emphasized the close ties between Germany and Turkey, not least as joint allies in NATO. Now, in first days of the Ukraine war, Turkey emerged as an irreplaceable mediator between Moscow and Kyiv, as Western nations were not enthusiastic about talking to Putin. Turkey has been a member of NATO since 1952. It constitutes the second largest army of the alliance after the United States. Crucially, the country is located on the southeastern flank, which makes Turkey a major security provider to the transatlantic alliance. The growing importance of Turkey's defense industry has made it an important player which directly affects Western interests. The Turkish-made Abarthar TB2 armed drones have, been, have proven themselves very effective in multiple conflicts in the past years. The country's geographical location means that it is a key actor in Europe's migration vulnerability. But it isn't the West alone. Russia needs Turkey too. Vladimir Putin congratulated Turkey's leader on his re-election and said that it opened up new avenues for cooperation between Ankara and Moscow. Erdogan has collaborated closely with Russia on key international issues despite disagreements. The two leaders have not always seen eye to eye, backing opposition, uh, opposing players in conflicts in West Asia and the ex-Soviet Caucasus region. But they have developed strong ties. Putin told Erdogan, who he called his dear friend, that his victory was clear evidence of the Turkish people's support. Now, Turkey has leverage in key areas for Moscow, such as the war in Syria, Kremlin's standoff with NATO, and the large-scale Ukraine offensive. Ankara has delivered drones to Kiev, but it has refused to join sanctions against Moscow. It has thus become an important alternative transit hub for heavily sanctioned Russian exports. Yes, Turkey has also mediated between Kyiv, the West and Moscow, including by helping broker the deal that allowed Ukrainian grain exports to resume. Putin praised the great significance of the projects between Moscow and Ankara, including the Russian-built nuclear power plant, Turkey's first. Now, earlier we spoke to our correspondent Susan Therani, who takes us through the short-term measures that can be expected from Turkey. 
Erdogan won in part because of the support of conservatives in his country. They remain devoted to him because he raised the profile of Islam, entered the international arena, and also remained independent, among other things. And during the run-up to the election, Erdogan was reluctant to support Sweden's accession into NATO, in part because he said that Sweden is too soft on groups that Ankara considers to be terrorists. There was also a series of Quran burning incidents in Stockholm, which angered his religious base. So they did stand by him in that regard. Now that his political future seems to be set in stone, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Sweden on the one hand, but it's also important to know that he will continue to play the middle ground between the West, his own interests, and countries like Russia on the other. And Susan also explains how Turkey's relations with the West may evolve over the next five years. While the U.S. and Europe are likely to seek Turkey's support on some issues like Sweden's accession into NATO, relations will more likely than not remain thorny in other areas like Turkey's accession into the European Union. Another five years of Erdogan means more geopolitical balancing acts between the West and Russia on the one hand. and. On the other hand, it seems that Turkey and the West will continue their relationship in a transactional manner.